Who's gonna start? Phil Huber here, back with another live edition for what's going on in the Woodsmith shop. Not that Woodsmith shop, the magazine shop. So one of the first things that I wanted to address is there's been some question about the live event that we're holding this fall here in Des Moines, Iowa. Which, if you're not sure where that name came from, it's actually French for the Moines. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Anyway. September 30th and October 1st, we're gonna have a live event, the Woodsmith Workshop, and it's gonna be two days filled with woodworking education and a ton of fun. So what we're doing is we're having uh, four guest presenters come in, George Vondriska from the Woodworkers Guild of America, Matt Cremona from Matt Cremona International Ministries or whatever he's got going on up there, uh, Ann Briggs from out on the West Coast, Ann of All Trades, you might know her, her handle at James Hamilton from the Stumpy Nub Woodworking Journal. And then we also have the three cast members from the Woodsmith Shop TV show. I'll be teaching a few sessions. Logan's going to be there and Chris Fitch is going to do something on carving. So we're going to have uh, small class sizes so that everybody gets to see up close and be up close and personal with the presenter so you can hear everything. You're not going to miss a session, you're not going to miss any of the presenters, and you'll be able to ask questions, be right up close for all the demonstrations. So uh, another thing that's provided for in the cost is uh, not only paying for the guest presenters that we have coming in, but also there's going to be food, uh, the Iowa Machine Shed restaurant which is located right next to uh, Living History Farms is going to be providing classic Midwestern fare and it's going to be uh, a ton of fun, great food. Uh, the first night, Monday night, the September 30th, we're also going to do a, a special uh, cocktail hour for, for lack of a better term for it, where it will be a meet and greet. We'll be able to uh, rub shoulders and meet all the staff or a lot of the staff for Woodsmith Magazine will be there. Uh, we're going to have some live music, appetizers, that kind of stuff and be able to talk with the presenters, ask some questions. Uh, it's really all about showcasing what we do here as a magazine and providing some special guests that you may not be able to get to hear, uh, hear from in person. So I want you to sign up, uh, register at the Eventbrite location that you can find on Facebook and uh, we'll hope to see you there. In the meantime, if you have any other questions about the event, please list them in the comments for here. We'll answer those uh, or you can uh, uh, get in touch with us. Now, moving on to the rest of the program today, I wanted to share a little bit of the updates that I've been working on on my rocking chair project. So what I have over here is the back assembly of the rocking chair and I just got done spraying the uh, first coat on this front face of it with some hair. I have it glued up and notice that I masked off. I think to do this more often is pre-finishing smaller assemblies of a project, especially when you get something like this where there's just a lot of nooks and crannies and little tiny corners. They're easier to get to when the pieces are farther apart like this. So with all the curves and stuff, I wanted to get this glued up and now I can deal with the finish here on the connect the front legs to the back legs. I have those all smoothed and then I plain small chamfers and ease those edges and then I have the uh, tenons taped off because I want to spray those as well. What I'm working on right now are shaping the corbels and what I did was trace the curve onto the piece rough cut it at the bandsaw, and then with a careful cut, I took the uh, off cut piece, put some 80 grit sandpaper on there, and I can use that. To shape a nice smooth curve, get rid of all the blade marks on there. I still have some ways to go. What I'll do then is wrap it up with a few passes of a card scraper, to put a nice edge on it. And then these guys will be ready to get glued in, and then I'll be able to spray those. Next, I think we're going to head over and see what Dylan's up to.
Why you gotta be so far away, Dylan? <laughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, Dylan here with the Woodsmith Magazine. Um, updated for me this week, I'm just kind of trying to wrap up or finish the shaker boxes that I've been working on. Um, I know through the process we kind of talked about several things or uh, steps that are involved to actually constructing these things. Um, they can be a little involved, but that should intimidate you. The three that I actually finished up here are the ones that were going to actually be in the magazine. So what we actually settled on is cherry for our bands. So these were all milled down to thickness, cut to length, uh, and then cut the profiles for the actual fingers. Um, People are familiar with the shaker boxes, you'll notice that the finger styles on these are a little different. I try to do something a little more stylized and it's a little bit of a departure from what's, what the tradition is in regards to uh, the shaker boxes, but I wanted to keep the material, obviously the shapes and the numbers all match up with this. I just changed up the, the, finger, uh, the look of the fingers here, the orientation of the actual brass tacks are about the same. I had to come up with, with my own spacing, but they're, they're comparable to what is actually provided in, the, again, the more traditional shaker boxes. So um, again, I did use cherry for the actual uh, construction of the boxes. Um, instead of doing a plywood bottom, um, I actually did a solid wood bottom. So my bottoms are actually uh, uh, white oak, uh, riffs on, and then what I did was I had it kind of recessed. Um, so there is a lip inside here, they're kind of press fit and there'll actually be um, toothpicks that go in. There won't be any glue involved and so I'll actually drill a series of holes around the uh, perimeter of this thing and then I'll plug them with these toothpicks just to hold them in place. You'll also notice too there's a profile here. What I did was actually I just went ahead and used um, a uh, profile bit here um, to again give it kind of that recessed look um, again, just to give it a little bit different uh, overall orientation and uh, style for this particular box. And then the top for these will be, again, comparable. It will be a press fit, which essentially will be, it will be obical shaped, and then there will be um, a lip around there that will be created by basically gluing, gluing two pieces of uh, wood together. Since our thickness is so small and specific, we won't be able to actually use a rabbiting bit with a bearing to get that, so I'll probably end up sandwiching two pieces together to create that lid. Um, so I'm working on that right now. This is one I did as kind of a mock-up. I went through a series of finishes and looks for the bottom, and this is what it actually will end up looking like. So um, the finish on this, I use like an aging accelerator to kind of give it not a barn board look, but it's, it's again, it's comparable uh, solution. Um, so I applied that, I actually applied it oil and I, I clear coated it with some catalyzed lacquer which is common for us here just because it dries so quick. And then I went ahead and ebonized the bottom um, to give it again kind of that floating look. So um, hopefully by next week, well I know by next week I'll have the lids done. I'm still kind of trying to figure out what I want to do for the actual pull on them. Um, the traditional ones, again the lids are a little different, they actually sit over the lip and there's uh, um, the, ba the banding is constructed the same way. So lids are a little different and then they don't normally have poles, but I wanted to put poles on mine to give it a little bit more of a contemporary or modern look to it. Um, again, just to make it a little more interesting project. They've, they've kind of been done to death, but they are great projects. Um, you know, it's been quite a joy kind of playing around with these things in different sizes. So um, look forward to doing that next week. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, we've got a little library over across the street and I actually pulled this book out yesterday. Um, it is called Innovative Furniture in America. Um, and it just talks about some of the progression of furniture um, and some of the, uh, the, the progress that we've made over the years here. And I found this project in here that I thought was kind of entertaining and would be a fun one I think to kind of replicate. Um, they have one here, the guy's name is Darcy Robert Bonner Jr. <laughs> I'm not making that up. Um, what he actually did was he actually came up with this wearable furniture that actually kind of looks like a leg brace. Um, just kind of caught my eye. Again, it's not something you would think of as a traditional piece of furniture, but um, it kind of goes to show some of the innovation that went, went into, you know, turn of the century furniture and just kind of reconceptualizing, you know, what, what a furniture object actually is, what it's meant to be, how it, how it functions, how it works in conjunction with the human body. So it does look very mechanical and odd and peculiar, but I think that's kind of what drew me to it. But so I thought about my maybe uh, embarking on um, the, the journey of trying to, to figure out how this thing is constructed and make one just to again to kind of see how well it actually functions but again it's just something that caught my eye this is a, a lot of what I do is just kind of flip through old books not always furniture books but I like the innovation involved in here um, plus a lot of pictures too so if you can't read or you don't like to read there's there's plenty to look at in here so um, but yeah 
anyway, motivation and inspiration is coming from all directions here. I just wanted to plug that. So uh, thanks for stopping in and take a look next week and these, these puppies will be finished. So talk to you soon. Over to Mark. Over to Mark. You know, hey everyone, people were worried about the bridge. Uh oh. <laughs> well, oh yeah. The bridge are right, a corner. So I've just spent the last 45 minutes down at the video studio looking for this um, DeWalt planer. And I've just kind of lost interest, couldn't find it anywhere. Came back to the shop and there it is, just sat on my bench. I'm like, what the hell? John Doyle up to his <laughs> usual tricks again, I think. <laughs> so anyway, um, what's been going on here? Progress on the workstation, table saw workstation. Got the uh, tops laminated, got it recessed out for the router plate and then the grooves for the extension of the table saw glides. I'm um, going to be mounting the actual planer on this come Monday on the flip top part. Um, what did I do to that? I ended up restaining, refinishing the actual camera through to this because I wasn't quite happy with how the um, plywood turned out, it was very kind of mismatched and just different different colours so what I did is tinted some lacquer and just re-sprayed it again just so it all kind of blends in better. Um, previous to doing this I had to jump on this little guy over here for the TV show and finish it up. So, the guys asked me to finish this off for the TV show, so I ended up making these little red drawers. Yeah, do, we have the, do we have the original plans? Because originally yeah. these were what red steel drawers that were yeah. here and they don't so, sell them anymore. So yeah, when, when this plan was originally done or when this project was originally built, there was uh, these red folded sheet metal drawers. And this is a cool project and we've uh, been struggling with it because the manufacturer that produced those decided they were going to discontinue them like what months just a few months after we built it yeah within a few months <laughs> so uh we just finished this on the, the show and like mark said you know it was a uh, kind of a replacement drawer but they worked well you know um mark had to make them also i guess the question is did they make pretty easy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That was so, pretty simple. We just made them yep it's all so, about quantity, right? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of little drawers. Yes. Yeah. Aluminium angle. And it is aluminium, not aluminum. I say, that's aluminum for <laughs> us Americans. Yeah. Aluminium. <laughs> hey, hey, we invented we this language. I was, I was yeah. say, you guys gave us the language. We screwed it <laughs> up. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. so, we yeah. just have a very heavy accent. <laughs> uh, is that all so, you yeah, that's all I've got this week. So, next week, this workstation will be done. I know I say that every week, but I hope so. I kind, of, kind of jinx it every time I say, yeah, next week it should be done, but I hope so. Next week it will I, be done. Uh, I started writing it as of today, so <laughs> I hope it gets out done. So yeah, follow me. Let's, uh, we're good. let's uh, incriminate myself in case this place lights on fire. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Uh, let me check our comments quick. Uh, Buenos Aires from Brazil. Okay, so for the last uh, week or so, I have been playing with a pretty cool little process and unfortunately my, uh, my resin jar is in the sink getting soaking. Um, but for this issue uh, coming up at Woodsmith, um, which would be issue 244, I think it drops in mailboxes probably August, is that right? Late July. Late July, uh, August, something like that. Yeah? Anyways, issue 244, uh, I am working on an article that is vacuum stabilizing, which is really cool. Um, so basically, you can take a piece of punky wood like this. Uh, so this is some spalted maple uh, that actually I just pulled out of my firewood pile. Um, it's starting to get a little soft, a little spongy. It's almost like styrofoam. There's no weight to it. And you can use a vacuum chamber and resin. Um, you want to have one? Yeah. And you can basically put this guy in a chamber, fill it up with resin, suck all of the air out of the chamber, uh, which is basically gonna cause all these fibers to crush down. And then you release the vacuum. And the only thing it, this can re-expand with is epoxy. 
So basically you're infusing that guy with epoxy and then it has to get baked, which is what I'm doing right here. In the process, I am trying not to burn down our photo studio because this thing is uh, smoking and steaming quite a bit, but it is curing. I finally got it dialed in. Uh, in case anybody's wondering and wanting to invest in a high dollar toaster oven, the $19 toaster oven from Walmart does not hold temperature real well. So I am trying to hold it between 185 and 200 degrees and I'm having to throttle, feather the throttle a little bit to it in there. So uh, it will be a pretty cool process and pretty cool article I think once it's all shot and done. So uh, maybe next week I'll have some turned stuff to uh, take a look at. Phil, are there any... Uh, are there any? Yep, there's Carrie. Carrie, just walking through. Oh, we through. got spray paint. Nice. Uh, Phil, is there any comments that you see on there? That we no, no comments that I see on here. Just okay. wanted to remind everybody about the upcoming Woodsmith Live seminar in May, May 16th, Thursday, 11 a.m. I'm going to be talking about all things sharpening. So if you have any questions. Or want to see the process that I use to sharpen my tools, I want you to tune in for that. And don't forget we are doing seminars once a month, so there's plenty of them for you to see and sign up for. You can get an all access pass and get all the ones from that we've done previously this year and through the rest of the year. You can sign up for that at woodsmithshop.com slash seminars. The ones we've done so far this year are uh, you have a better designer. Become a better designer with Dylan. Q&A with the Three Stooges. From the Woodsmith Shop. The Actually, I like the way that Khalid phrased it. He said the Three Amigos. The three Amigos. Mm -hmm. Which, he, I'm a little sad, he referenced uh, John as D'Artagnan, which oh. uh, I think it's a fair, <laughs> a fair <laughs> assumption. Three Musketeers then, right? Yeah, sorry, I said the Three Amigos. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. The Three, uh, three Musketeers. Um, what was the other one? Your hand plane uh, one. Hand plane. Uh, and is that it? We've done four. Mm, yeah. I don't remember what the last oh. one was. Probably one that I did. Yeah, it's Phil's Phil's favorite, favorite jigs. Phil's favorite yes. jigs. All kinds of fun stuff there. So upcoming, you'll be able to see that schedule. So that's yeah. all I have. Okay. That's all you guys have. John, do you have anything? No, we'll talk about. We'll go through my the therapy of okay. the workstation next week. Do you have any words of wisdom to leave our viewers with? Um, MDF bench tops are okay. <laughs> okay. There you go. All right. Bye, everybody. See you guys.